Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Matthew McConaughey for your consideration. Welcome back to The Haunted Beard, everybody. My name is Jake. Thank you once again for joining me. So if you've been following along, I have been going through and watching and reviewing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. And today I am on Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation, sometimes called Return of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But whatever you want to call it, whatever title you want to give it doesn't really matter because this thing is pretty terrible. And the biggest thing of note when it comes to Texas Chainsaw Next Generation, just in case you don't know, is that it happens to star a young Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey in some of their very first feature film roles. And here's the thing about Next Generation. It is pretty much the exact same thing, once again, as the original film, much like we saw with Texas Chainsaw 3. You got a group of people, they get lost in the backwoods of Texas, and Leatherface and the family are after them. And I understand that that's, you know, the basic structure of these movies, but you would think at this point, four movies deep, you would at least try to do something a little bit different, throw some sort of twist in it, something that we haven't seen before, but this movie is content once again with just giving us, I mean, basically the exact same thing we've now got for, you know, four movies. It hits virtually the exact same beats. It has basically the exact same moments and, and reveals that the original film has. And Next Generation is, for the most part, a pretty typical just kind of bad slasher movie. It does a lot of the same things that other bad slasher movies do. It's got, you know, just terrible characters making stupid decisions, pretty terrible acting, and, and just bad dialogue and writing and all that sort of stuff. But what was even more disappointing about Next Generation is the kills. The kills in this movie are so indefensibly terrible, I, I cannot believe that this is what they gave us. Now, what I typically do for these reviews, I kind of at least like to go through the movie, give you a little bit of a breakdown and go through some of the, the highlights and the main events and stuff like that of the movie. So here we go. Let's get into it. So the film starts off. It is high school prom and we're introduced to our four main characters. And to be quite honest with you, I don't remember any of their names and I don't really care to even look him up. But anyways, uh, one of the girls, uh, not Renee Zellweger, the other girl, she finds her boyfriend making out with some other chick. She obviously gets upset and, and takes off. And somehow they all four of them end up in a car leaving. They are driving down the highway. This scene was edited in such this weird way because they're like driving down the highway on this main road. And like literally three seconds later, all of a sudden they're just lost in the backwoods of Texas. It's like you go from like a, a main road to just like lost in an instant. They end up getting into this car wreck. The guy that they hit is is unconscious. So three of them leave to go get help. And there's a handful of them just kind of walking through the woods throughout this film. And again, it's like it, it can't be that hard to give us at least somewhat likable characters here. And Renee Zellweger is fine. But the other characters are, are just awful. They're just some of the most... The, the dude is a total scumbag. The girl that he's with is just so annoying and just irritating. And there's just kind of annoying things that happen from like a filmmaking perspective where you understand it's it's dark. They're in the backwoods. But it it's so clearly lit that, you know, the fact that they're carrying around a flashlight is... It just looks stupid, and it looks really stupid, too, when one of them drops the flashlight and the light goes out, and they're like, oh, I can't see anything, even though, like, everything is so clearly lit, you can see everything totally fine. But it, just stuff like that that obviously does this movie no favors. They end up finding this little place to get some help. The woman there is very clearly going to be one of the bad guys who belongs with the family, but she calls Vilmer, who is Matthew McConaughey, to go out there and help them. So then the three of them end up leaving to go back to 
the car. McConaughey shows up, we get our first kill, and it was just a terrible lame kill. He, he ends up running the kid over a bunch of times. You don't end up seeing any of it. That's the thing with this, like all the kills are just cutaways. There's just nothing good here. The kills here are absolutely horrendous. So what ends up happening is Renee Zellweger gets separated from the other two. Uh, those two make it to Leatherface's house, unbeknownst to them, seeking help and all that stuff. There's this really lazy scene where the one girl's sitting down on this bench on the porch and Leatherface is like literally two inches behind her and he's like smelling her hair. And it's just such a stupid lazy scene because like you would obviously know if this giant hulk of a man was that close to you smelling your hair but she's just completely oblivious to it. Not long after this, Leatherface ends up chasing Renee Zellweger through the woods and she of course once again goes to the house to seek safety but of course it's Leatherface's house. And there's kind of this chase scene through the house and stuff. She ends up getting out onto the roof and starts climbing up. I think like the, the phone satellite tower thing, whatever it is that's on the roof. And you can clearly tell here that it's not her. It's the stunt double. So just more sort of technical issues and problems with this movie. It's, it's very, very obvious. Renee Zellweger ends up escaping. She goes back to the girl that originally called for help for them. And this is when we get, I guess, is what's supposed to be some sort of surprise reveal. Of course, she's evil. And so Renee Zellweger ends up getting captured and brought back to the house. And at this point, we are like 50 minutes into the movie. We've had exactly one kill, the poor kid who got run over, which you don't even really see. And and just there's just nothing about this that's working. It's just all around just pretty dull and, and awful. None of it lands. It's just all flat. It's all stupid characters with terrible acting and bad dialogue and just all the typical stuff. There's no scares. There's no surprises. There's no suspense. It's just the most boring, lazy, <laughs> put together thing. And it's just all around pretty terrible. Now, if there is any element to this movie whatsoever that even makes this somewhat watchable, it's Matthew McConaughey. And he is by no means good, but he is he is so insane over the top that you kind of just have to watch it. <laughs> Face, and he wants a new one. There is, uh, and I'll admit, I had a little bit of fun watching him on screen because, he, again, he is so ridiculously over the top. Let me tell you, there is so much unnecessary yelling in this movie, it's kind of amazing. First of all, Leatherface is the most vocal we have ever seen his character, as he's just constantly screaming and yelling, even when he's chasing these people. I, I don't really know why. I guess that was just a creative decision made by the filmmakers. But yeah, he's just constantly screaming. And so is Matthew McConaughey, just for like no reason. I mean, I guess obviously it's, you know, his character, but it's just like, why is there so much yelling in this movie? And not only is Leatherface annoying just because of the amount of yelling, he is the least intimidating we have ever seen him so far in any of these movies by a country mile. As to where, like, he, he hardly even feels threatening most of the time you see him. He, there's, there's so much of the time where he's on screen and he's, like, cowering in the corner afraid of McConaughey. There's one point later on where Renee Zellweger just simply, like, yells at him. And he, like, gets all afraid and nervous and stuff. And it's, it's just all around terrible. Now, back to McConaughey, because we do get some genuinely pretty hilarious and great moments from him. And I couldn't believe it because he actually delivers his classic famous line. I had no idea it was in this movie and it just made me happy. All right, all right, all right. Now, as bad as the first 65 minutes or so of this movie is, the last 20 minutes are so indescribably bad that it's, it's kind of just worth watching. It's some of the most just 
out of left field, what in God's name is going on filmmaking I've seen in quite some time. And it all starts with yet another dinner scene. So they've got Renee Zellweger tied up at the dinner table. McConaughey's hooting and hollering, yelling out of his mind. And two guys show up at the front door who we've never seen. We have no idea who they are. These two guys are in suits. They look rich. They walk in. And let me explain to you the next sequence of events, because here's what happens. Again, we have no idea who these guys are. This dude comes in. He walks over to Rene Zellweger. He, he, his shirt is opened up, and he's got these like weird markings and scars and piercings on his stomach and chest. He proceeds to lick Rene Zellweger's face, stops, turns around, picks up two slices of pizza off the floor, sets them on the table, and then they leave. <laughs> Dude, I have no idea what any of this was about. I, I just started laughing and shaking my head. Now, upon further reflection, my guess is, so what we hear a little bit earlier in the movie is, is the girl that is McConaughey's girlfriend, She's talking with Renee Zellweger and is telling him that McConaughey works for these sort of upper elites and stuff like that. You know, this Illuminati type people, like it's all this some sort of conspiracy. These are the guys who really control everything. And so I'm guessing she was really telling the truth. And, and these are the guys that just show up at the doorstep and, and I don't know, just take part in what the family is doing i guess like it, it, again it's, it's just the most like what in the world is going on out of left field thing that i i thought it was actually pretty great because of how just completely insane it was and i will say i did actually kind of enjoy the last 20 minutes just because of how ridiculous it all is like there, there's so much stuff here that's just bad in a very typical we've seen it before just bad movie stuff but the last 20, it just kind of takes it to a whole different level that like you can't really believe what in the world is happening. And so it's it's entertain it's entertaining. It, it's at least interesting because it just starts doing just crazy stuff that doesn't make any sense. So anyways, we finally get another kill here. Uh, the other young girl who is with uh, Renee Zellweger, uh, Matthew McConaughey stomps on her head and and crushes her head, but you don't see any of it. And then McConaughey has just a complete unhinged breakdown where he just, he goes crazy, pulls out a knife, starts like cutting his chest and arms and just starts hooting and hollering, just literally losing his mind. And in all the commotion, uh, Renee Zellweger just stands up out of her seat and, and starts to make her escape. Then we get just this another hilarious and ridiculous scene where uh, Zellweger gets this remote control and see McConaughey has this messed up leg and so he's got this uh, like robotic thing attached to it that helps him walk. And so Zellweger gets away by like jamming the button to like get his leg to involuntarily move in and out and stuff and it like trips him up to where he can't he can't catch her. It's so stupid, but it's just kind of, again, it's amazing. It's so interestingly bad. You kind of can't help but find it entertaining. So Renee makes her get away. She's running away. It's now morning time. She's running through this field, through the woods, and, and happens upon this road. There's this old couple who are in an RV, and she's trying to, you know, get them to stop so she can get on board. And she gets on board. And Leatherface is there, and the RV ends up flipping. And, and of course, McConaughey shows up. And let me tell you something. The way McConaughey dies in this movie is the most random, insane thing I have seen in quite some time. There is a crop duster plane that just happens to be in the area and is flying around and is witnessing them chasing down poor Renee Zellweger that the pilot of this plane decides to drop down and fly into Matthew McConaughey and he gets murdered by the propeller blades on this plane. <laughs> it's so fantastic. 
it, it's it's just unbelievable. I just cannot believe what happens in the last handful of minutes in this movie. And then out of absolutely nowhere, the dude who licked Renee Zellweger's face 10 minutes ago shows up in his limo with his chauffeur and rescues her. And they drive off to safety. And she's like, hey, you know, what the heck was that all about? And he's like, you know, I was teaming up with these people because they were supposed to sell this like sort of spiritual experience. And it's like, what? <laughs> okay. And then I guess, you know, he just decides to be the good Samaritan and is like, do you want me to take you to the hospital or take you to the police? And then, you know, he takes her to the police station and, and that's the end of the movie. And it's, <laughs> again, it's so insane that I can't help but just kind of love it. Texas Chainsaw Next Generation is a wild one, man. It's it's pretty terrible, but again, th those last 20 minutes are a special kind of bad. And uh, at, at least it kind of got interesting and entertaining there at the end. But yeah, it's this is a this is a wacky movie. So, anyways, those are my thoughts. Um, hit me up down below. Let me know what you think of this thing, and uh, would love to hear from you. So. Yeah, those are my thoughts. Next up on the Texas Chainsaw series is going to be the remake from 2003. This is one I have seen previous, uh, but just once. So uh, actually kind of looking forward to watching it again. It was pretty good from what I remember. So I actually kind of enjoyed it. So that'll be up next. That is all I got for you today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. If you got something out of this video, go ahead and do me a favor and do not click that subscribe button unless you want to be haunted by the beard.